Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us. We're so excited about our announcement this morning, and I know you are as well. I do want to take a moment to reflect as we are about to announce who the sixth president of Anne Arundel Community College will be. I want to take a moment to reflect on the passing of Dr. Tom Florestano. Um, many of you were on campus years ago when he was our president. Many of us know him personally. And I think that it's very important for us to acknowledge his work in growing the school, both physically, geographically, and programmatically, and the foundation that that provided for the fabulous institution we have today. So if everyone would just take a moment and remember Tom, his wife, Pat, and their children, and uh, the commitment he made to this organization and the benefit we all have as a result of it. Thank you. I am pleased to have with me today uh, some of my board colleagues, and I'll ask them to stand for a moment um, to be introduced. Art Ebersberger, trustee of the board, Reverend Diane Dixon-Proctor, Kimberly Burns, Jim Johnson. We have trustee emeritus uh, with us, Gene Floyd, as well. Um, trustee Jerry Klassmeyer was with us earlier to have breakfast with um, our, our new president. And uh, two of our uh, trustees, uh, Trustee Walter Hall and Trustee Cynthia Robichon, are traveling and unable to be with us today. Thank you. <laughs> it's about a year ago that Dr. Smith let us know that she would be retiring this August. And uh, it was a sad day for many of us and a fearful day for some. Um, it gave us a tremendous opportunity and uh, we're very grateful for her uh, that she gave us so much time because we could be very contemplative and thoughtful about the process that we went through looking for a new president. Um, I, I won't dwell on Dr. Smith's achievements because we're going to be spending the month of May um, celebrating her many accomplishments and uh, I know you will all be joining in many of those celebrations. And today we are here to talk about what will be happening in the future. Um, at the time that Dr. Smith made her announcement, uh, uh, Dr. Jim Johnson was chair of the Board of Trustees, and we knew we would be transitioning and I would be assuming the chairmanship in July. So he very graciously uh, accepted the responsibility of chairing uh, the screening and search committee on behalf of the board. And I am, uh, and we all are, very indebted to him. He put together a tremendous uh, process uh, much with the help of your own Suzanne Boyer, who was incredibly instrumental in the process. And um, we are very fortunate today to have several of the members of the Search and Screening Committee with us, and I would like to introduce them, and if they are here, uh, would they please stand as well. It's a long list in small type, and it requires my glasses. <laughs> So as I mentioned from the Board of Trustees, I have a few members who served um, with Jim on that committee. It was Art Ebersberger and myself, and then Trustee Emeritus Jean Floyd. Jean, will you stand? From the Foundation Board, Angela Ewell Madison. I don't know if Angela's here today. Um, from the Administrative Staff Organization, Dr. John Grabowski. From the Professional and Support Staff Organization, Kip Snow. From the faculty organization, Anika Ingram, and I heard she's teaching class. She wanted us to tip our hand. She thought she should be able to know ahead of everyone else. <laughs> um, from the learning resource management team, Debbie Mercado. From the adjunct faculty, Chester Lawrence. From the academic forum, Dr. Suzanne Spohr. From the student association, Fatima Bhatti. Ooh, sorry about that. Uh, academic Dean Jean Runyon, and then we had some community representatives representing the STEM industry. Um, Mark Wolkow, who is the Director of Academic Outreach for the National Security Agency. From the hospitality industry, Tom Hall, who is former Vice President of Six Flags America, Tom. Uh, representing the healthcare area, Victoria Bayliss, who is President and CEO of Anne Arundel Medical Center, 
and uh, our academic partner in this was Marky Campbell, who is Senior Vice President for the University of Maryland University College. So you can see we had a very diverse and rich group of individuals who uh, helped us through this process. We had 120 candidates apply. Uh, the screening committee whittled that down to a, a group of 40 plus and started uh, looking deeper into those backgrounds and eventually invited 12 individuals for interviews. Uh, in addition to having interviews with them, the uh, screening committee conducted dozens of reference calls, and I mean dozens. Everyone on the screening committee participated in four or five calls in order for us to find out as much as we could about the candidates. And then about a month ago, Dr. Johnson handed me an envelope with the candidates that the screening committee thought were the individuals who could uh, come to Anne Arundel and provide the leadership uh, that we are so accustomed to and move us to the next level of excellence. So today we are here to um, acknowledge that uh, the board took those three candidates and again did um, some very extensive background search, more reference checks, had interviews with the candidates, um, did a lot of conferring with other individuals who knew the candidates, and uh, last Thursday and Friday, uh, wine dined and grilled the potential candidates. <laughs> I am incredibly happy to tell you that the board made a unanimous decision in selecting its new, uh, the new president for Anne Arundel Medical, C uh, Medical Center, Anne Arundel Community College. I was just talking about Tori Bayless. Um, so let me find my highlight sheet about our candidate. Um, I'm very pleased, as I said, it was a unanimous decision. Um, our candidate comes to us with a very unique background. She has served on faculty in a number of institutions. She has had administrative experience and also has had some presidential experience, vice presidential and then presidential experience. She showed clear and unbound enthusiasm about Anne Arundel. She told us early in the process that um, this was the only school that she was considering, that she was certainly happy where she was, but finding out that Anne Arundel was available made her stop and think. And she recognized that because we have a history of keeping our presidents for a very long time, that this might be her only opportunity. So she threw her hat in the ring, and that enthusiasm was something we saw at every turn. She has a clear commitment to students. And when, time and again, in referencing, when people said she had to make tough decisions, it was the criteria that helped the community, the college community, make that decision. She would say to them, what is in the best interest of the students? She has a history and experience of being very engaged and involved with the community, and we know that Anne Arundel has a wonderful history of that. Uh, with industry as well as organizations throughout the community. And we want to continue that because it, it, conti it will help us continue to have the rich and inclusive um, um, involvement that we want to have. So it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the president-elect for Anne Arundel Community College, Dr. Dawn Lindsay. I just want to comment, I was sitting next to Dr. Johnson and when Vicki was talking about whining, dining, and grill them, grilling, I have to tell you, my perspective was grilling, whining, and dining. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot even begin to tell you how happy I am. Your college is truly a nationally known, recognized institution of stellar academics, rigor, and commitment. I do want to thank Dr. Johnson and Chairperson Vicki Fretwell for setting up an atmosphere and an opportunity to dialogue that was cordial yet very professional. I'd like to thank the board for their selection. As I shared with them, I won't let them down and I promise I will not let you down. I come back to Maryland after 18 years and I've been looking at houses for the last two days so I'm a little excited. And I called my realtor back in California, and I said, we got to get my house on the market. And he's like, Don, I'm on vacation. I said, Saturday morning? He said, Saturday morning. So I plan to be living back in this area 
at least by July the 15th so I can have an opportunity to kind of get settled in the neighborhood and start here fresh. I want to share with you that I am so proud to be able to represent you. I promise I will facilitate your issues and your needs. I will listen. I believe in shared governance. I believe in the collective. I believe in synergy that happens when people interact together. To take this college and facilitate continued growth is something that I look forward to because of the foundation that you all have created for forward movement. You should be very proud of what you've done, and I'm very proud and honored to be here. I got a call last night from your current president, Dr. Marty Smith. I feel like we're old-time friends. And believe it or not, we did not know each other when I was teaching at Dundalk Community College. However, I didn't know the extent of relationships that Marty has in California. And two of my mentors and two of my biggest supporters are very, very, very close friends with Marty. And Marty told me last night that she was actually lighting candles for me. Um, <laughs> And I think she was really lighting them for you and for me, but I was most pleased to understand her degree of support and her willingness and her assistance in helping me transition, continuing to build on the foundation that you've set forward, continue to develop and build on the relationship that Marty has with this community. This, this is a dream come true for me, and I cannot tell you how happy I am. I cannot tell you how I will never let you down. I will be very committed, um, and I look forward to actually interacting with everyone in this room, everyone on this campus. I truly do know all of my faculty and staff and administrators by name. I think it's important that I walk around and get uh, an understanding of the campus, and someone was asking me this morning what my primary goals are for the first little while that I'm here, and my primary goal is actually learning how you have created such a successful environment for your new president to walk into and be able to move forward with you. Thank you.